Good afternoon, everyone. I'm the Commissar. We are, as usual, watching Forged Alliance Forever. And today, we have a 6 vs 6 custom game being played on Adaptive Millennium. Now, I'm going to slow this game down just a bit, so that we can introduce the players and discuss the map, before things start getting too hectic. Here in Mauve, going Cybran, we have David, rated 1100, and he's in the forward slot for Team 1, the northern team. Behind him, in this nice circular sort of, I don't know, roadmap, foundation, we have Bastu the Monodas. I'm going to call him Bastu for the sake of this. He's white, he's Eon, and he's 900 rated. To his right, going clockwise around, we have Composite who is also Eon and also 900 rated, he's in baby blue. To his right, we have OCA, rated 1500, highest rated on the northern team, he's UEF and he's purple. To his right, we have under control, in this dark green colour, he's 1300 rated and he's going Seraphim. And last but not least, for the northern team, for team one, we have in light green, in Seraphim, Brute of Bracken, who is 1200 rated. Moving on to Team 2, the Southern Team. Here in light pink, we have Free MP. He's 1400 rated. He's Eon. And on the air circle to his south, we have Pie Guy, the lowest rated player in the game. He's only 700 rated. And he is Cybran in bright pink. To his left, we have Lucius. Lucius is 1100 rated, going UEF, and he's Burgundy. To his left, keeping on going clockwise, we have Lazy Noob, 1300 rated, and he's Cybran in dark blue. To his left, we have Scuzz, highest rated player for the southern team. He's 1500 rated. He's Eon, and he's chosen to go for reasons better known to himself. This sort of Fika brown colour. And actually, which one of these would you call Fika brown? Does it, is this orange? This feels orange, yeah. No, orange is lighter than that. Where well, you've got the sort of mucus brown and vomit brown. So here in vomit brown, we have Andrew Trishok, we'll call him Andrew, and he's Cybran, he's a thousand rated, and everyone's gone first land. Since that's pretty much the meta for everything now, I'm only going to tell you if somebody starts other than first land, save you a bit of time. Now let's look at the map. Reclaim, reclaim, reclaim. Lots of reclaim in the middle and on these little sort of nud nudgy sort of rock bits. And unsurprisingly, all the comms for middle players have queued up orders either with the comms themselves or with these engineers to go out and get this reclaim. We'll see who does a better job of it as the game progresses. And these also bear, bear mentioning, they are plateaus. This, this and this and the three mirror points here. They can only be accessed either by edge building or from the air. So the air player is trapped on his plateau to start with, but he's also pretty well defended. Let's speed time up to normal and see who gets what. These rocks are obviously the tastiest prizes and Brute's getting there quite early. So is David. Andrew has not really made a move to get this. I mean, that engineer's got it queued up, but David's comm could just blast it. 3MP has sent his comm to match Brute's comm, and they're probably going to have a little scrap over that. I imagine they're just going to leave the queued orders on all the reclaim and ignore actually shooting at each other, apart from a couple of little pot shots like that as they come in, in favour of hoovering it all up, and there they go. Meanwhile, that NG got shot down without mercy by David's comm, and David gets all of this. Now, 
under control has his engineer coming here, OCA has these engineers coming here, and Composite has his ACU coming here, whereas from the southern team only Lazy Noob's Com is really coming to get this area. So it feels like the northern team have a slight advantage on Eco, or rather on Reclaim, both sneaking in here, but Bracken has decided to take the opportunity of being on the water to edge build up here and get a factory up to claim this plateau. So let's have a look and see who's got the more reclaim so far. Well, the northern team is about 800 reclaim ahead, but the southern team has by far the better eco in terms of production. So we'll see how that balances out. David has grabbed the mass and is content to retreat back to his base. Andrew, meanwhile, is coming forward. Is he going for this mix? This mix currently belongs to Composite, whereas and this mix to who's that? OCA. Whereas this mix has been taken by Free MP. So it just. Not much difference as to who's got the middle mixes, but still. Oh, the eco has caught up, so they're pretty much dead even here. It feels like nobody's got a real lead. Here, we see Bastu dropping some NGs onto this plateau to get those mixes and rocks. Oh, but he keeps a couple on board. Where's he go He's going to try and drop the other, other plateau. That's pretty bold. But meanwhile... His opposite number, Pi Guy, is not transporting NGs, but he's transporting Arty, and he's just going for a straight up drop onto the plateau up here. So that could be quite the quite the bold play if it succeeds. It's been spotted though. So we have I think that's the first upgrade, the speed upgrade on composites com going down, but it's quickly followed by the cyber and gun upgrade for Andrew. Here he has indeed dropped on this plateau and he's just queuing up some reclaim orders to get as much as he can there. Meanwhile, three of the RTs dropped here to try and take out this Hydro and he's going to take out the other Hydro if he can with these RTs. But Bastu is quick to respond and he's just sucking them up with engineers. And this bomber quickly picks off the remaining RT before it can actually take out the Hydro. So that wasn't as successful as it could have been. Up here though... He's doing a bit more damage. How is he going to respond? He has got this bomber which can come in and take things out. And David has also got a bomber helping out. Will they save the Hydro? They will not. But the bombers are enough to finish the job. So he did cost, cost his opposite number of Hydro, did Pi Guy. But Bastu is still more than okay for power. So... I don't think that was incredibly worth it. Meanwhile, there's been a drop of three engineers from Pi Guy to counter the one that Bastard dropped on here, and in the ensuing reclaim war of 3v1, the three were successful. So Pi Guy has taken back this plateau. Meanwhile, Andrew's finished the gu gun and is coming forward. He's coming forward on his own though, which is a little, a little courageous when David has been setting up with these turrets and with a bit of spam, though his com is as yet unupgraded. I just saw a T2 going down for someone, that was for Lucius. Pi Guy also about to complete T2 there. And Brute also completes T2. As does free MP, so a lot of T2 comic upgrades going down on the right hand side of the map. This is quite good though. Lucius has sent in a lot of his spam to help out against Brute. But it has been forced back by Brute spam and turret. And Brute's now got a T2 PD up with that new upgrade, which should keep this area secure. 
However, Free MP has chosen to add the sensors, which goes well with the Eon T2 upgrade. And so you look what he can see with that. He can see just all the way to here with his com. So his com is a walking scout as well as a decent construction unit. Here though, Andrew's walked in on his own to try and just go com to com head to head with David, but he hasn't counted on David's turrets, his bombers and his spam. And Andrew is actually taking quite a lot of damage. Could we be at risk of an early ejection? And does Andrew want to see if he can try and take David with him? David's pushing bravely, especially with these bombers coming in from Scuzz. But Andrew is now down to the red, 2000 health, and the bombs keep dropping, the shots keep firing. 100 health, 900 health, 100, I mean 1000. 700, 600, 400 health. Andrew makes it into the water with just 400 health remaining. That was a very lucky escape. Meanwhile, this sort of turret edge built up by 3MP is going to quickly snag this plateau off Brute, a nice little build there to which he didn't really have a response. I don't like this, this RT just going straight for the comm. I could think he could have simply denied this PD, but now this PD can do some work and bam, down goes the RT. However, Brute does have a decent amount of spam which could drive 3MP back. Lucia's already feeling the pressure and pulling his fellows back. There goes one of the turrets. And there goes the other. So it feels like Brute just has a slight advantage up here against 3MP. Down here though, Composite's double gun comm has come out of the water with David's spam and they're pushing Andrew quite far back while Andrew hides with his damaged comm in the lake. But Scuzz is coming in to help out. However, Scuzz's comm is unupgraded and against an Eon double gun comm and this amount of spam, I feel that Scuzz is perhaps overextending. He agrees and pulls back. This could be worth watching though. We have two TMOs already up and a third on the way. Could he be trying to snipe David, who is still injured from that fight? These turrets are trying to poke out that Hydra, which is just out of range. Oh no, it's not. Why wasn't that firing, I wonder? That Hydra's going to go down nice and quick. Composite walking forward, seeing what he can do with his comm. He's quite... He, he's being supported by his own interceptors, so he's not too worried about air. Can he get much done though? There's a reasonable amount of tanks coming in from from Lucius and from Andrew, so this might force Composite back into the water, especially as Laser Noob's com is coming in to help. Bracken's taken a bit of fire from these point defences and he's gone and hidden behind behind the hill where he's putting up another point defence to take at T2 to take up this T1 point defence. Is this plateau really worth that much of a scrap? I don't know. We've got T3 air on the field and the quantum reactor just finished there for Bastille. Whereas Pi Guy is still at T2. Does Bastille know this? He absolutely does. So if I were Bastille, I would be thinking of sending a strat down. Now, have we noted that full share is not on this game, so if we can get a snipe on one of these comms with a strat bomber or two, while Pi Guy doesn't have the tech to respond, that could be big. But it looks as if we're just getting yeah, we're just getting ASFs and the odd transport out from Bastille. So Bastille not taking advantage of his early lead to T3 air. This 
could be borrowed. A tactical missile launcher, is it going to try and take advantage of Brute's wounded state and just try and snipe him? And this one here, the TMO's launch, and where are they going? There's a TMD here, I think we could have hit that. Yes, he, he could have just smacked out Brute's com with that TMO, but with a server from TMD, which is pretty good, He's just shooting all these missiles down, and now there's a shield up. I don't think that Brute's at much risk of losing anything to those tactical missile launchers, so that feels like a wasted opportunity for free MP. Here, however, the missiles are beginning to come out for Lazy Noob, and what's he going for? Is he aiming for the these um, mexes up here? A T3 engineer has just been dropped up here by Bastu, but not in time to do any defending here. Down goes one mech, down goes another mech, and boom! Immediately, he Bastu responds with a TMD, but it's a bit late for that now. He'll have to rebuild those mechs. Reasonable wave of spam. Now with a bit of uh, now with a couple of Titans in there coming up from Lucius, that could pay off. But. I say that, only one Titan and against T2 PD and an Eon double gun com, I feel that Composite will be able to clear this up. Now there isn't any forward TMD, and they're focusing on the com, and because it hit the shield, Bastu didn't get the notification. Bastu? Brute. Sorry. So, Brute could be at risk from these tactical missiles raining in on him. Here come another two. Could they be heading for the com? Yes they are and boom! Brute of Bracken taken out by a tax snipe from Free MP. And as we said it's not full share. So this shiny little base he had here with all that nice eco, boom, all of it explodes. Now, these cyber and tactical missiles have been doing their dirty work here, taking out mexes. But look at all this, there's now, what's that? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17,000 reclaim? Just ready for somebody to walk in and both free MP and under control have comms ready to do it. And Bastu is also quite keen on that. He's sending a transport in with a bunch of engineers to pick it all up. But those engineers may fall prey to this other band of Aurorae coming in from Free MP. Quite a big spam fight here. David and Andrew just going at it toe to toe with T1. I think Andrew's got the more, but David has point defences to fall back to. And these Aurorae are going to take out those NGs, but these gunships, the the Vulthus, the T2 gunships from the Seraphim, which are almost but not quite T3 gunships, but they've they've just landed and they're being picked off by uh, uh, Pi guys and Free MPs fighters. They're just interceptors, and these ASFs from Bastu will clean them up, but he did lose one of the Vothals, and the, some of the others have taken some damage. As we predicted, that Titan and that little bit of spam was no match for Composite's com, and Composite has a shield supporting him. Let's take a moment to look at the eco. Now, Southern Team still well ahead. They are, what, 230-ish ahead in Generated Eco and in Total Mass Collected. They're only 40,000 ahead, but that's still quite a lead. That's, what, two monkeys? Bit of factory setup here from Free MP. Feels like Under Control has got it in hand with his T2 turrets and his TMD. He's he's not making the same mistake. And what's this? OCA, though he's also gone T3 air and he's pumping out broadswords. And with these Vothals from Under Control, they should quite easily clear up 
clear up this little expansion out here from 3MP. High guy telling 3MP to hide under the water, which he does. 3MP does have the shield now, but against this amount of gunship firepower, I think Pi Guy's right to caution him. Composite probably wise to pull back the is this going to be a successful snipe? There's TMD going up here, but these irritating little cyber missiles will split. No, there's an Eon TMD here and a shield, and between them that's enough to just block it. Lots of shots going out here though. And the next ones they get through... Ooh, they're getting through the shield, but the Eon TMD and you simply dodging by composite deals with the issue. Is it time for Lazy Noob to reclaim these TMLs and just put them into something better? Because with this TMD here, these multiple TMDs and shields here, I don't think he's going to get anything more done. He's just pumping mass into nothing, essentially. Large waves of T1 bombers out here for both Scuzz and David. Now, these bricks could have caused David some problems, but with that many T1 bombers, he just drives them straight into the water. Then they realise that they've only taken a little bit of damage and pop out again. We do have T3 for David, and he's got his first brick out. But if Andrew were to be supported by this crowd of Lobos from Lucia's... Ha! Huh, I say that about the bombers, but they've just completely burnt those bricks. More tactical missiles, but there's enough TMD here that, I mean, what are they going to do? Nothing. I think that leaving these up there was just a waste of mass. Scuzz has noticed the spider under construction there, but Scuzz has a GC almost done. So, which I think will be the first experiment we've seen this game. There's now a significant lead here, look at that, is that 216-ish mass lead, 200, maybe, three, maybe 300 mass lead for the southern team. The GC is finished for Scuzz, and he's immediately sending it forward. David's monkey still has a little way to go, now a GC does beat a monkey head to head, but it's up to David to pick the ground where he fights. And the monkey will provide stealth, but there's probably enough scouting. I wonder if they have Omni yet, the southern team. No, I don't think they actually have Omni coverage of that area. the GC moved forward. Ha! We did have an attempt to put up a naval factory, but didn't really go anywhere. Nothing came of it. Don't know why he'd do that with Eon. What was he going for? I mean, I, I guess maybe a torrent or something, but that seems like a lot of investment for little gain. Cyber and Salem, so that would have been fun, but... We didn't see any of that. David completes his monkey. T1 
total must collected now well in favour of the southern team. They're 130-ish mass ahead, 130,000-ish mass ahead, which is which is not insignificant. I mean, we're talking several experimenters worth of mass, but they don't seem like they're really really using it much. We haven't got anything big going down here. I don't see. I don't see any RT planned for any of these players. Here, though, the GC from Scuzz is walking out. Do they know it's coming? They haven't the foggiest about that GC. Indeed, Bastu is worried about it. They know there is one. They just don't know where. Well, they're about to be rudely surprised. This is their point of view. When suddenly, out of nowhere comes a big fat laser beam. David's monkey responds. His huge wave of T1 bombers responds. His point defense responds. All this T1 spam responds. And it looks like that GC is going down. He's focusing on the monkey, and I don't know if that's a mistake. He could have taken out the T3 HQ, he could have taken out some mexes. But all he's done is he's taken out, essentially, one mechs and a couple of tanks to leave 22,000 mass just dumped on David's base. So I think that was a bit of a waste. Andrew's gone to hide with Scuzz, who's building another GC. Not seeing anything in the way of nuclear warfare from either side yet. I don't see any SMD. If any of you see any that I've missed, shout at me in the comments about it. On which note, don't forget, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, drive viewers, all that sort of thing. Drive viewers this way, towards me, not that way, away from me. You know what I meant. Now here's a chicken coming forward from... Is that under control? Yeah. Now they do know there's free MPs com, just, you know... I... Well, no, they don't know, but they guess. Hiding at the bottom of the lake, but... I think that despite the fact that it's um, not full share... Under control is right to just... Make hay while the sun shines, get going while the going's good and walk that Tota into this space because it, if he dies in here then his Iron Storm does a lot of damage and he, if he'd stayed back here he'd just have died to the GC and not really done anything. I mean, he's still going to die to the GC but he's taken out some factories, he's taking out some eco. What can he get done? These Corsairs also drop some bombs. Now, down goes the chicken, but it's done some decent damage to the GC, and what's this Iron Storm going to manage? Boom. With that, 3MP's Tech 3 Land HQ gets knocked out, so he can't now build Tech 3 until he rebuilds that. That's why it's a good idea to get that chicken into the middle of the base. That said, this is looking quite sparsely defended when there's a GC and a significant horde of titans sauntering up the sauntering up the causeway to take it out. So we'll see how that goes down. Monkey here from Andrew also pushing north, but there's a decent lot of snipers and harbs. If he can micro these at range, they might be able to take out the monkey. That said, the monkey does have stealth. Huh. That monkey hates that patch of ground. What you, what, what you got against that patch of ground, Mr. Monkey? What's it ever done to hurt you? Those cybers, they're just so unrelentingly aggressive, aren't they? 
big bunch of Gunters there to defend against more incoming XPs. I imagine that this NG drop was going to get some stuff from the Colossus, but look at all these NGs that David has eaten it all with. This monkey has not gone up against that line of that line of Gunters plus another monkey, and he has decided to walk over here instead. And then just hang back. Could he do more? Could he push in against that? I mean, they can't see it, so... David gets himself another XP somewhere. There. Another monkey. And Composite gets the GC. That's a big horde of broadswords, though. They might need it to stop all this sort. Those TMLs still firing and still achieving basically nothing. But that's a lot of AA supporting with GC. And a lot... These Percy's, they're a good choice because the AA's all up here. That said, Pi Guy's got some... a quite decent horde of ASFs. And OCA's gunships back away. And I think that high guy might actually have air control at the moment and Bastille pulls away meanwhile though good work from these gunships of under control he's just keeping them out of range of these AA tanks he's keeping them over his flak he's got a lot of lightning here which he just carefully lured those ASFs over and that was good work and it's given under control time to come out with this chicken which should get quite a lot of damage done on these Percy's though I think with that many Percy's that chicken's gonna die it might and watch this we've got a nuke coming out fired by OCA who's it's going for free MP's base does Free MP have any strategic missile defense? I don't believe he does. I'm wrong. I'm lying. He does. So, well, you know what this song says a wasted nuke is better by far than, wait, no, it isn't. That was just a wasted nuke. So, that chicken has done a re reasonable amount of damage, but here comes a big strat snipe in from high guy but under control sees it coming he dodges about he's got decent health due to the t3 he's got decent shields and he survives and those strats just die so this gc though is absolutely not dead and under control is desperately putting up line upon line of T2PD to take it down, but it's more interested in this space here. No, it's not. Where do you want to go with that? And OCA throws up a fat boy in the nick of time, which might be able to see off this GC before it does too much damage to either of their bases. This huge horde of AA has done sterling work. But this base, reclaimed at great cost, has been just taken out again by that GC and its accompanying horde. Another big wave of strats, who are they going for? Are they going for the fat boy? I think they are. But they don't get through its shield and that's just another big wave of strats wasted. That feel, feels like Pai Guy made two mistakes there. But these restorers are going to be more than enough to take out those gunships. So that shows us that Scuzz has also got himself into the air game quite heavily. And now we're beginning to see some artillery on the way. I think that's the first artillery we've seen. This Duke just started from Lucia's. And I don't think we've had any equivalent shenanigans going on in the north. No, we haven't. But these restorers have come in 
and it looks like they're trying to snipe under control, but they're underestimating the power of the Serra Shields. And with a bit of anti-air support, and with these Cougars quickly coming in, these hero Cougars from OCA, another air attack from the south is just wiped off the face of the map for pretty much no, no gain. This fat boy has done a decent amount of damage. Hasn't yet paid for itself, but it's seen off quite a lot of stuff. The reclaim field there is getting huge though. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, maybe 100,000 mass in this area to, to pick up. Quick check on the eco situation. That lead that the southern team have has now increased to a shocking 800 per tick, and they are what is that? That's not, they're literally two mavors ahead in total mass collected, but they've just been throwing it away on these air attacks that are getting them nothing, and they've deposited a good quarter of it right here. So although it looks like a it looks like team two should be stomping, they're they're really not. And here we go again. This fat boy under attack. It shields drop, and I think it might be for the chop this time. But ASF's coming in from oh, but Pi Guy comes to its defence. And the fat boy goes down. Still, it cost a lot of bombers, and I don't know if that was worth it. Another nuke goes out, heading for. We've got a disruptor almost complete here. So, did I miss that earlier? Either way, it's going. Is it? We've got. We actually got a disruptor start firing. So we've got one and. 1.9 arties and the nuke gets shot down that arty must be targeting up here where is it firing come on let's see a disruptor shell yeah it is but he's out of anti nukes the second one's going to get through Boom! That Cybran base getting incinerated in nuclear fire. And suddenly, that southern team economic lead and that big heap of arty doesn't look so great. Did they really... Did they really achieve anything? Skuz accepts that his SMD placement wasn't up to scratch. Where is his SMD? It's over here. Yeah, it didn't cover that. However, this duke is now complete, and it is covered by a load of SMD. 320,000 mass killed from that nuke, that's quite, quite the move. We now have two GCs just sitting in the water from 3MP, Well, this chicken comes out here and tries to clean up this or I think it won't have any trouble eating through that. That's a lot of bricks and two monkeys from David, and that feels to me like this GC coming out of the water isn't going to get much done. A lot of T1 bombers come to eat it, that's just an SCU. And with this GC and these point defences, that's just going to be a mass dump. 3MP's GC is also making a push. Now that is quite, quite, quite a... a worrying sight for anyone. Two great big Galactic Colossus assault bots stomping towards you. Oh, they're called experimental assault bots now. They used to be called sacred assault bots and I quite like that going playing into the whole Eon thing. Aha! Now I said that was going to be a mass dump but this GC is also nearly dead thanks to this big heap of restorers. But, 
what took out Scuzz. I think he just, I think he just killed himself. Wasn't a nuke. Yeah, Scuzz left the game. He just, he just didn't like it. He quit. But he didn't need to. Look at this. The nuke's down. Pretty much all of OTA's base is down. Sure, the G, this, this damage GC from Composite has come in behind them, but it's heavily damaged. And oh, that's nice. That horde of that horde of drones just trying to reclaim the GC. Uh, and with these ravages, even so. That sort of vast, vast heap of mass. Look at that. 40, 50, 60, 70, 70,000 mass dotted around there at least. But, under control, the highest, no, sorry, OCA, the highest rated player on the northern team, he's essentially been knocked out. Only 70 mass per second, hiding over here. No, no high tech factories. MP continues pushing with that GC, but he's he's not going to get anywhere with that. Rather than taking out the SCU, he tries to take out the point defense that just kills it. So this is quite good, though. A lot of spam just being pumped out by the southern team to make sure that the northern team can't capitalize on anything up here. And that is a Rambo group AC SCU from, um, what's his face, from 3MP. Just trying to get a T3 Max up right there. That's pretty courageous play. Especially with a chicken coming in from under control. Now, despite the departure of and the nuking of Lazy Noob, there is a decent amount of arty now up. We've got this arty here, we've got a second arty here, we've got a third under construction, and it's causing difficulties at the back here for Bastille. But not as much as these bricks of and monkeys of David are causing a problem for Andrew. They've just sauntered in here, and Andrew hasn't had a chance to stop them. This is Andrew's whole base going up. Now, Andrew is hiding at the back with it, with stealth field, like the cowardly cyber he is. And Strats from Pygo take out one of the monkeys, but there's still another monkey. Are they going to find him? Do they know he's there? They actually don't know he's there. Oh, and could this be for the first time in a long time? No, nope, no, well, this is all wildly reclaim related. So um, we'll have to see how that whole uh, actually in the eco lead when that settles down. And the mega as well joining the party, but there's strats bombing it pretty much uncontested from Pi Guy. At, well, these ASFs just sit around from Bastille. Bastu's lost quite a bit of his air grid to those arty, so it's understandable, while Pi Guy's air grid is pretty impressive. This monkey has a lot of bricks to contend with, and there's another monkey over here, but with the armies split up like this, I think they'll probably succeed in taking out the bricks. I don't like this choice of a solo from David. I think it should be pretty obvious to him that air is definitely in the hands of Pi Guy, and that that solo will just get shot down before achieving anything. 
Now, under control has been quite cagey with this chicken and I think that's wise. It's just racking up vet, it's stopping them getting too much done. This stealth field though is quite nice for this Rambo com. I am assuming they don't know it's there. They don't. So he could, he, could, he could actually set up something quite nice there if he wanted. The reign of Artie continues. We now have three dupes up and a fourth on the way. Sounds like an SCU going pop somewhere. Over here. As this Mega walks up, but that Mega's lost all its support and Pi Guy's still got his air superiority. However, there isn't really much to defend here. There's a monkey nearly done. Oof, there goes quite a bit of bird power. I'm assuming he's targeting the ion plant because that... Yeah, look at this. Kaboom. But that monkey finishes. He could... If he knew about it, he might have been able to come back here and actually take out Lazy Mule. But he's walking forward because he's not aware of the monkey until just now. And now, half health megalith supported by straps, I think the monkey can take it. Though, David's monkey comes in behind, takes out that monkey. The straps switch up to this monkey, I think we should have focused down the mega. So these ravages will deal with the mega easily enough. And with their help, the monkey goes forward, it's going for lazy, but the mega's down. The hives try to reclaim it, and the monkey's down. Up here. We've had a bit of a chicken fight against some GCs. One chicken down to one GC, but this GC is still standing, this chicken's still standing, and we've got some counter RT. This hover ham has nearly been knocked out by the heavy bombardment from the south, but it's still firing just with a heavily assisted set of shields. It's going to take hard work, even for those, is that f four dukes now? One, two, three, still only three, I think, to fight back. And here comes yet another mega. What damage can this do? I mean, they, they, they obviously know about it, they're shooting it, and they're dropping bombs at it. Has Lazy decided that it's just not worth living anymore? Is he trying to just draw the Mega's fire? Because, I mean, he is... Actually, he's still producing 100 Eco, where's that from? He's got Raz on his com, he's got Raz SCUs, and he just takes out the Mega. That was, that was brave, and I didn't... I thought he was just going to die. Up here, that Colossus we saw earlier has walked around here with a heavy amount of sniper bots and harpies in support, backed up by Redeemer Anti-Air. I feel it needs a little bit more Anti-Air knowing just how many strats there are out there. There's a bit more shielding going up and Basto was still trying to rebuild his air grid, but let's stop for a moment and look at the air they have. 16 ASFs for Bastu compared to 90 ASFs and 10 strats for Pi Guy. Now Lazy Noob just decided it wasn't worth it and quit. Pi Guy not happy about that. So now we're down to these three versus these five, though OCA has actually got back quite significantly from the issues he was having with a bunch of T3 mixes back up, a bunch of Razcoms, he's up to 300 something mass and there's only a hundred mass in it now between the productions of the two teams. Andrew has been expanding quite quickly, getting lots and lots of spam up. He must be just eating, with only 670 power production, he must be eating it, look at that, off his team and he's absolutely feeding the mass from the wreck of this monkey in his base. I mean, that even with that reclaim, there's still 
60 to 80,000 mass around there, so he's he's got a lot he can manage. One, two. Oh, that duke got taken out here by Counterati, which has done a decent amount of damage. But even with that taken out, there's still three of them firing. And with this vast horde of Sarah Shielding being assisted, the one Hovertham is still getting work done. More GCs massing in the pond from Free MP. I think Buster is wrong to be building strats here. He's, he's still burning them, but surely, surely he needs to focus on retaking air now that the RT is not, is not concentrating on him. Because Pi has this vast horde of strats. These shields quickly assisted by OCA's Kenner drones. And they're just they're, they're just holding up against We're back to one, two, three, four artillery installations. And they're, they're just they're just not breaking through. That is quite an interesting play. They were fully loaded stealth tactical missile launchers about which the northern team has no idea. That could achieve something quite significant. They've got no idea there's just this big horde of TMOs there even though they've recaptured all of this area. Pie guy's brought some dudes down here and he's putting out megas to support the ground assault. Here's a monkey of his. And three chickens up here. Chickens? GCs. You know what I mean. Other big walker things. And we just one chicken against three GCs of the monkey. I mean... Sure, Bastu has like a couple of strats and Pie guy hasn't responded with his air force yet. But, with this vast, vast heap of strats, a lot of them get taken down, but so do the shields, uh -huh. for one second around the RT, and quickly, that shield just goes up again. Now, these GCs could have done a bit more, I think. They've only lost one, but they've taken out the chicken, this huge bank of ravagers is work it has taken out another GC and the third one is still in range. If they pushed in there they could have done so much. But the RT's done its work here and finally, finally that RT from under control and its supporting shear gens is taken out. Ooh That was quite the exchange. Huh <laughs> bit of a face-off there as the torps go back and forth between a mega a monk, and a monkey but, and some bricks versus another monkey. They're not really getting anything done though, are they? Look, they're just, you know, definite targeting issues there. They need to think about moving those. The RT is back targeting the air player, and as you see, it's getting work done. An attempt to build some counter RT is having problems. This soul ripper has just been slowly working. That's just such a waste, though. It's just going to die the moment it goes anywhere. More chickens coming out from under control. And the Ecos, Team 1, now actually ahead by 300 mass per tick. Overall, they've been, they're nearly 800, they're, they're 800k mass behind, which is immense. But, until this RT really started doing, doing damage like that, they didn't really have much to show for it. But now it feels like the RT is just a little too much for the Northern team to take. Those are still fully loaded. Have they forgotten that they've got a big bunch of TMOs up there? The 
the RT continues to do its work. But look at this. Teddy SCUs being readied for some sneaky shenanigans. Ow, this is just painful. They've spotted some SMD, they want to take it out. But have they got enough to stop this counter push? Two megas coming in from the north. These three megas and the GC are more than enough to mash this roll, but can they get down here to the south before these Okay, I was going to say before these get anything done, but that's so many ravages, that mega's just gonna be eaten. And it looks like Bastille's just out of it now. And what have we... Oh, we did actually... These Megas actually managed to get something done. One of them goes down to, a me to another Mega. Other one goes down. They got a couple of SCUs, but that's about it. Pi guy complaining he hasn't got a nuke yet. Does he have a nuke launcher? I'm probably looking right through it. He's got yes he has, it's there. And he's also got a scathis, but he's only just started that. Ha! And these have a sacrificial system on board. He's going for a tele GC. But where? I remember back in the day, I think it was Chosen who first came up with the Teddy GC. Now the Eon Sacrificial System means that a unit can that has build capacity can put its mass into a unit that it's trying to construct as just direct separate sacrifice and it's an optional upgrade on these SCUs. So they're gonna teleport somewhere with that teleport upgrade and then just throw their mass into a GC. That's all if it was done. Let's see if my prediction comes true and it just, you know, dies. Under control. He didn't actually suicide. He, he, he died in the explosion of um, P-Gens from that arty. And this feels like it's suddenly going very quickly south for the northern team. Wave of strats coming out to support the Soul Ripper. And Pykei actually doesn't have that much air left. But Here's the Tele GC. They, the SCUs come out. They put the GC template down and they all just sacrifice themselves into it. Bang. And suddenly, in an instant, there's a GC up on the air plateau. And there's David's com. And what could he possibly do about a GC? Just. Bang. David taken out, all his stuff goes up. There's Bastille. Targets the wrong one at first. Targets the second wrong one at first. Come on, Bastille's come, it's right there. These two fat boys are a noble effort and they go in. But Bastille's now under fire, he's not gonna take out that GC, he's about to explode. These two fat boys are being faced off by a mega. Two fat boys plus that amount of sniper fire should be able to kill a, a mega, maybe even two. There goes Bastu at, at last, as we do. The fat boys sensibly pull back. The snipers don't sensibly pull back and just die. Pi has loaded his nuke and is asking them to take out the SMD. And now suddenly, with only a third of the Strategic mass lost. income that the Southern team have, this looks like it's all over. Another wave of straps. That, that, actually, these ASFs in that have also been produced by Composite, and he just takes out the straps. 
but as that rain of arty fire just demolishes this base do you think that nuke's going to get through? I think it might. Oh, and look at those megas walking in in the background. Don't they just look menacing? Bang. The Eon base is incinerated by the nuclear fire. And this GC that was tallied up here was firing down from above to take out this HQ. Composite dies in the explosion and we're left with just OCA left. The desync doesn't matter it doesn't actually change anything in this game and OCA all on his own against now is that one two three four five dukes was there one up here don't think so five dukes a nuke hordes and hordes of experimenters marching in he resigns and the game is over. Thank you for watching, everybody. So, some good, some some good play both way. way waves of XBs. Anything you think someone should have done differently? Do you think Pi Guy wasted those early strats and just snipes that achieved nothing? But maybe they didn't achieve nothing after all. He won in the end. Tell me in the comments below, and please remember, like subscribe and obey. I'm the Commissar and I'll see you next time.